Hey everyone, so it's time to bloom. Um, I haven't had this on my channel yet because I wanted to make sure that um, everyone had gotten their recipes out and I want to show you how I do it. Um, I, have a diff I have a few different ways that I do it, but today I'm just gonna show you the basics. Um, these are some blooms that I did. Um, this one was done with my paints, uh, Carolina Blue and uh, Gold Rush and Dark Chocolate. Came out really pretty. And this one was done with the Bubblegum, Ellen's Red Shimmer, Dark Chocolate and Gold Rush. And then this one, um, I had mixed these paints up in September when I first took the course and I just did this last week and they still work. So uh, this paint does last a while if it's stored correctly. You just, if you're getting dry spots, you want to make sure you don't get that to fall in. You may get some little lumps in your paintings, but it still works. All right, so today we're just going to show you how to mix the base and the cell activator and we'll do a little painting after we get that mixed up. So I like to use the Bare um, High Gloss. This one is 833-210 Ultra Deep Base. Uh, this one is definitely the high gloss and that's what you want. The shinier the better. Um, your colors stretch so much better. So on this um, there's, getting, there's no getting around this unless you're just going to use paint and water. Um, I did try using our paints already mixed with the cell activator. And that's what I got. So it all comes down to the cell activator and your pillow. So I like this though because when you're first learning how to do it, this puts the correct amount of stretch in your paint so this is how I'll teach you how to do it first so let's get started so on the base you're gonna need three tablespoons of base to um, mix a color and this stuff is very thick. Now, it looks white, but it dries clear. So whatever color you put in here, that's the color you're gonna get. And it happens when you're mixing your colors too. They'll get lighter, don't worry about it. The color that you picked from the original pigment is the color you're going to get when it's dry. So I know a lot of people were freaking out, saying, oh, my paint is whiter, it's pastel, but it's not gonna be when it dries. So we use three tablespoons of this. And one tablespoon of varnish. Now I'm using the Josanya varnish. Um, this is what Shelly recommended in her video um, because I did take the course. Um, and I also have a coupon code below for you to take the course so you'll learn all the little tips and tricks that she has. So one tablespoon of that in here is all you need. This is what's called your pouring medium. Now when I make this, I like to make it one cup of this to a quarter cup of this and just make a bottle. And you can store it in a bottle that has a cap so that you can use it whenever you're ready to mix paint or pigments or whatever you're doing. Uh, a lot of people use the Pearlex powders. Um, uh, most of us are now going into Leslie Onstead's Color Art pigments, and that's what we're going to mix today. I will do um, one tube color just so you can see the difference, because we may have to add more varnish to that one. So once that's mixed up really well, this will make probably Oh, uh, three containers of paint. Okay. So all of my color art pigments are mixed up, but I do love this color so much, so I'm going to mix it again. Um, this one is ginger peach. 
So when you're mixing these beautiful pigments, um, you want to make sure that you dissolve that pigment first. So when I buy my pigments from um, Color Art, I always get the uh, Vivid Polypore with it. You can use the um, enamel as well, but I'm going to use this just to wet my pigment. Well, I've been using it all day. It's probably plugged up. <laughs> Let's see if that works. There we go. So I just did about a half of a teaspoon in there. And that's just going to be to dissolve this pigment. And I like to put a heaping spoonful in, but you you can't add too much, let's say that. You'd be really gritty. But I want that color to be intense, so I always go just a little bit extra, but it's never going to get brighter. It only gets to like one shade. But it's like an orangey um, gold. It's absolutely beautiful. It's so pretty, isn't it? So to this, and you can see I have hardly anything in this cup. All I did was break down that powder. So to this I'm going to add a good tablespoon. And you can go more if you want more. I go by consistency if I'm going to add more. Because this uh, polypore does thin it out a little bit, so I need to thicken it back up because I want my colors on the thicker side. We all know what mixing black and white is like when it's um, so much thicker than our other paints and that's what you're looking for. That nice gooey, that gooey consistency that I, I like. It's like maple syrup. A thicker maple syrup because <laughs> there's so many different consistencies of maple syrup but this is right about where you want to be now bubbles mix these up the night before so that your bubbles have a chance to come to the top um, if you want to paint right away just tap and all your bubbles will come to the top and then just give it a very slight stir just to mix it up just a little bit before you paint. So I'm going to set this aside because we're going to use that color. And I have so much over here. I have 38 of these colors, I think. 30, 33 or 38, but I mixed all of them up today. Okay, now, two paints. Since I don't have a black, I wanted to mix up a black. I'm not sure how this is going to stretch over the white, you know, if I'm going to get gray or whatever. But I wanted to add um, a black to my mix. I'm going to take that right off because I don't want to get a dry clump in there. This is Lucas um, Iron Oxide Black. So I wanted a good dollop of black. And that's probably about a teaspoon. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my tablespoonful of the base. We're going to mix that up, and it's going to be very thick. And we're going to thin it down with varnish. See now to me, that's too thick. It's just too pasty. And you can mix, 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 but remember the more you stir, the more bubbles that you are creating. Now if you see that this has lightened this up, remember it's going to dry black. Don't freak out about that. A lot of people freak out about that. So I'm just going to give it just a little squirt of varnish just to thin it down. So I'm using this varnish as if it was water. I 
Lucas paints have a tendency to bubble up more than other paints. I notice that when I use them, um, when I'm doing Dutch pours, they get a ton of bubbles in them. So what I'm going to do now is tap that cup. Get those bubbles to the top. And I should be good to go. We shall see. I feel like it's Halloween over here. <laughs> Orange and black. Well, we should add a purple, right? Okay. So, cell activator. Here's the tough one, guys. Cell activator can be black or white. Um, the best white for making your cell activator is the Amsterdam white. And let me grab that. Okay, it was hiding behind my paper towels. Um, this is just the standard series, but the titanium in this titanium white is heavier, and this is the one that works the best for everybody. So I want to add, I want to make it a little bit extra, so I'm going to go about a tablespoonful. Now, Floetrol. You can use the American Floetrol, but if you're going to use the American Floetrol, um, you might want to add a couple of drops of the Minwax Wood Conditioner. Um, some people say three to six. I've heard some people say two drops is plenty. I skipped all that nonsense. I do have it. I haven't tried it yet. But I, I went ahead and ordered the Australian Floetrol, and I got this on eBay. Um, it was 30 bucks for this little bottle, but you only need a couple of tablespoons for your cell activator, and that cell activator will last you for weeks of painting if you're not doing this every day, you know. So I'm going to just give it a little shake because it's been sitting. But I just want a couple of tablespoons in there. I'm just going to put one to start to break that up. Because if you put it in all at one time, it'll take forever to break that paint down. So right now, it's just a little too thick. It's kind of like how our black paint was. So I'm going to add just a little bit more. You want this just to be a smidge thinner than your paints, your colors, so that it can glide across. And that's what creates the cells. Yeah, that's perfect. Clean my stick and give it another stir, and then we're going to do a painting. Okay, we're good. All right, let me clean this mess up, and we will do a painting. Be right back. Okay, so we're ready to do a painting. Uh, now your pillow paint. Might some people may call it base, but let's not get it confused because if some people say base, they think of this pillow paint is what you want to call it. This is your pillow. I like the Velspar. This one is satin um, satin enamel. That's the Velspar 2000 that you can get at Lowe's. So this is a six by six canvas. So I like to use almost a half a cup of paint on here. It's getting that pillow. That should be enough. That's gonna be stretching it. Don't skimp on the pillow because the thinner you go, 
the less um, the less stretch you'll have for your bloom. And a lot, I always tell everybody don't torch too much because you don't want to burn your paint. So let's try some colors. I'm going to go ahead and put that ginger peach on the bottom. Such a pretty color. So I like to draw a circle and then I'll fill it in on the second one. I like a lot of color, so I put a lot of puddle down. And if you see bubbles, just pop them as you go. Only takes a second to get rid of them. And there's my bent going on. All right, let's put some black in there, just for giggles. <laughs> it's got a lot of bubbles in it, so I'm not sure how this is gonna work. I really should let it sit overnight. Okay, and then I'm gonna put Color Arts Mystique. This is a gorgeous color. Let me just tap a few air bubbles out. And then I'm going to add Mango Freeze. Another color art pigment. If you hear any noise, that's my UPS man delivering at 9 o'clock at night. <laughs> Silly guy. Alright, so here's our cell activator. Nice heavy dose of white. like a lot um, open so that I have more to blow. Alright, so here comes the blow. So what our goal is is to come down and out. So I do see some bubbles. I do want to pop. I don't want that showing up as white. Alright, you won't be able to see my lips, but you might be able to see the blow. I'm letting it come back, and I'm probably going to use my um, turkey baster just to get some more movement in there. This is what you want to see. If you're getting that, you're on the right track. If you're getting this with no cells, then you may need to rethink your cell activator. We're going to tilt that off, so I'm not worried about that at all. So it's all coming back in. And now I'm going to take up my turkey baster and give it a few blows. Let me pick these up at Dollar Tree. So I'm looking to see where I need to work, and I have a spot here. And that'll give me some more cells. just don't want to get too many what I call um, tentacles because then when you stretch you're limited to where you can stretch to. Let's see if there's anything under this white. Not seeing anything come up. Okay, so we're all back to the middle already, so let's stretch. And I'm going to come here first and get rid of that gray spot from the black. 
I did have some black show up though, which was surprising. Thought it might have got buried. So I went ahead and took that completely off. Now, see, I'm stretching out those cells now. And you may get more that will open up as you stretch. Glad my husband is here to get my order. I'll take that black over the edge. And when you get it back to the middle, this is where you have to decide which way you want to go next. I love these cells here, but I love these more. So I'm going to go this way first. That Mystique is a gorgeous color. But you can see I have enough white pillow paint on there, so I'm able to stretch. If you can't get to that fourth edge of stretching, you're not putting enough on. So I always say, you know, that half a cup is a good way to uh, measure. This is a six by six canvas, so that'll give you something to base it on anyway. So now I'm going for this last corner. And once I get it down there, then I know I'm home free. Here it comes. I was trying to sneak out here. <laughs> okay. So once it's right go too much because you might get a little wonky and my black did break up a little bit with that house paint so I may have to think about um, is it the black it's what we call flocculation and all of that can be explained if you google it <laughs> We don't have hours to explain that one. All right, so I want to just torch this right here because I have a couple of air bubbles that I don't want the white to come up through. But normally I would not torch that because you're bringing more white up that way. But I think that's pretty. And I'm hoping that white sinks a little bit more in the middle there to give me a few more cells. So I hope I can teach you something. Um, I know a lot of girls can't afford to take the course. Um, and I thought there's plenty of girls doing this online. Uh, Tammy Anderson, Erica Hughes, Jenny Post. Jenny has done an awesome job. Um, Tammy Anderson has done it with just paint and water. But I wanted to show you the way that I learned it in the course. However, I am using the um, Color Art Pigments instead of the Perlex powders. The Perlex powders, um, you don't have a ton to choose from like you do with the Color Art Pigments. She's got so many colors, guys, you'll go crazy. And it's so fun to watch when you put that, you know, you saw it looked brown and it made this absolutely gorgeous peach color. So when you're ordering them, make sure you're ordering by the color and not by the color of the pigment itself because you never it will never come out that exact color so um, also if you want to take the course and I, I highly suggest you take the course um, Shelly's got tips and tricks and she does um, canvases with three or four or more blooms on them to show you how to stretch um, but I can just I'm just teaching you the basics and we're going to be doing a lot of blooms um, this month um, because I just want to make a ton of tiles and I want to make some paintings and maybe some clocks 
Um, I bought some boxes. There's just so many things that I want to do some blooms on. Every video is not going to be blooms, but we're going to have several. Because right, I already told you it's <laughs> in December, January is going to be bloom month. But um, don't be afraid to take the course. Take that, get that discount. I think it's 5% off or $5 off. I'm not sure. Um, but it's worth every penny. Um, I sat there for seven hours and watched the entire course from start to finish, taking several notes, um, going out and buying the products. Now, like I said, the other girls are using different products. Um, I use my paints, my Parage Posse paints, um, to get me my blooms. They work fantastic. The, I had great success with them. And they do have the shimmer, and these are not resined yet. So once they get resined, it'll really pop that shimmer out. So check out all the links below. If you need to get these little cups and stuff, I have them in my Amazon shop. Um, Lowe's for the Valspar pillow paint. And you can also pick up the Sherwin-Williams High Gloss Ultra Deep Base there. This is number 833 Two one zero. So make sure you're getting the correct base. Uh, the Josania varnish you can get it through Jerry's. Um, if I remember, I will put the link in the description um, to take you directly to Jerry's to purchase that. Uh, and the same with the Amsterdam is at Jerry's. It's kind of your one-stop shop for um, the essentials. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a blast making it for you. Um, I try to be as thorough as possible, but I always recommend learning it from the master, and Shelly Carruthers of Shelly Art is definitely the master of this technique. She has worked for years to perfect this technique, and I support her 100%. So, uh, Shelly, I hope I did you proud if you watched this video. Um, I just wanted to share my experience with this of course i do have some flocculation <laughs> um, we'll be rethinking some of my products that i'm using because uh, i didn't get it with the other paints so we'll see what happens but thanks so much for watching guys and i will see you all on the next bloom bye now <laughs>